in most compounds, when there are different kinds of atoms that are making up the molecules, there will be a difference in the electronegativities. This is only natural because different elements have different levels of electronegativity. For example, take carbon dioxide. We can use the table above to work out that a molecule of carbon dioxide is going to have a linear shape like this. Now, look at that special periodic table again. Oxygen happens to be more electronegative than carbon, and that means that both of the ends of this molecule, where there are oxygen atoms, are going to be slightly negative. It also means that in the middle, where there's a carbon atom, it will be slightly positive. We use the Greek symbol delta to show we mean slightly. So we can show this on our diagram of carbon dioxide. This difference in charge gives every molecule of carbon dioxide polar bonds. As you can imagine, because so many different molecules contain different atoms, they will also contain polar bonds. We'll show these in blue. So great, CO2 has polar bonds because of the electronegativity differences between the carbon and the two oxygen atoms. Not only do some molecules have polar bonds, but they also have something called a net dipole, which means that it's possible for the entire molecule to be polar. A molecule will have a net dipole only if it has polar bonds and the shape of the molecule is not symmetrical. Why is being symmetrical or asymmetrical important? Well, look at our lonely molecule of carbon dioxide over here. Because both its ends have the same slightly negative charge, the polar bonds cancel and there is no overall dipole. This is all a long, roundabout way of saying that carbon dioxide is not polar.